Thanks for joining us, you guys. This is What a Weird World with Chris and Kylie. Welcome, welcome. This is our fourth episode. I think that is so crazy. It's gone so quick. Yeah, it really has. It doesn't feel like... It feels like we literally just started. Because And we I was did. just talking about mermaids two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, yeah, speaking of talking about mermaids, I have no idea what the subject is today. Oh, well, I've been keeping it a little bit of a secret. I'm like, I'm like in for a surprise. I am basically a listener right now. I'm not just the guest that's fighting for my spot every podcast. I read your description of the episode and I was like, so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the last podcast, (laughs) Kylie wrote in the description, Chris fights for her reoccurring spot as the host or as the guest (laughs) of the podcast. (laughs) Deplorable. I didn't know that you paid attention to <laughs> well I well I do and now you know <laughs> caught baby <laughs> I've been caught <laughs> so is that why I don't know the subject because I'm a guest <laughs> no I actually thought it would be fun um to try some mystery and allure about the paranormal topic because typically mm-hmm. I announce it in the episode before right but I wanted to see if this would come off a little bit more attractive for our listeners. <laughs> Trial and error. Because now she's angry. She realizes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so excited. Well, if you're new here, my name is Kylie. And uh, that's Chris. This is our podcast, What a Weird World. We discuss all things paranormal, unexplained, supernatural, or just plain weird. So we're going to start off with our tradition of asking Chris what she knows about this week's topic, which as of right now, that is absolutely nothing because she doesn't even know what it is at all. It's <laughs> even less than normal, which is <laughs> not anything to write home about. Exactly. You're like, how could I know any less? Well, right. I just won't tell you any of the topics until we're about to talk about it. <laughs> okay. So with that, what do you know about the Winchester Mystery House? Dude, Nothing. <laughs> nothing (laughs) i so winchester to me is like a place in the east of the united states maybe like a fancy college excuse me well before i learned about it when i heard the name winchester i immediately thought sam and dean from supernatural their Mm -hmm. last name is winchester okay okay that's just my own mind doing its own brain (laughs) connections and i've never seen that show so i'm completely just out in the wilderness here I think most people think of the guns, which for this story is accurate. We're talking about the family that made the famous gun that won the West, the Winchester rifle. Okay, paranormal, not at all. (laughs) We'll get there, we'll get there. So let's do a little bit of history because I like to do some deep digging into my subjects. The rifle was created by Oliver Winchester's company, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Oliver Winchester was a businessman, not really the creative mind behind the guns. He started the gun business in 1855 when he invested in a company called the Volcanic Repeating Arms Company. So you can see where the inspiration for his own name later came from. He eventually became the primary stockholder and changed the name to New Haven Arms Company. The New Haven Arms Company improved on the already existent volcanic rifle and created what was patented as the Henry Rifle in 1860, named after the gunsmith and creator Benjamin Tyler Henry, who worked with Winchester at the time. Around 12,000 of these patented creations were sent off to be used in the Civil War. By 1864, Henry and Winchester went their separate ways And Winchester started proving yet again on the Henry rifle. And by 1866, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company was alive and well. Pumping out, if you will, new models (laughs) and improvements. When Oliver Winchester died in December 1880, the company was thriving. The company was then passed on to his son, William Winchester, who then died of consumption or tuberculosis in March of 1881. Four months after inheriting the business. William, the one who just passed was married to a woman named Sarah. So naturally, Sarah inherited quite a bit of money and some stake in the company after William's death. It's said that she inherited $20.5 million, or in today's money, $550 million. Oh, uh, that's that's a big chunk of change right that's there. A- <laughs> Can you share some, Sarah? Because that's I'm right. a little hungry. <laughs> Where is Sarah? <laughs> 
Uh, she raise also... your hand <laughs> <laughs> will the real sarah winchester please stand up <laughs> please stand <laughs> up please stand up <laughs> so she on top of this she also received almost half of the winchester repeating arm stakes so she received an income of a thousand dollars per day or again in today's money twenty seven thousand dollars a day so she was not trying to figure out how to eat or put gas in her horse and buggy she was fine <laughs> living the life <laughs> <laughs> the finest linens and doilies of her time. <laughs> Doily queen. She, she could get gold trim doilies if she wanted. She could get gold, full 100% gold doilies. <laughs> Just solid doilies. <laughs> I don't know what you'll use it for, but here's your solid gold doily. But clunk. the point is, is she could freaking, she could buy it if she wanted. Absolutely. This lady was, at least financially, she was living the life. She was in one the, of the wealthiest women alive at the in time. In the 1800s. That's like pretty yes, legit. Right. Women weren't really allowed to work. So the fact that she was She was boss babe. She was the OG boss babe. We got to throw it back to Sarah Winchester. She is girl boss. Hashtag. Girl boss. <laughs> hashtag girl boss. Hashtag girl energy. Hashtag email me if you want to become your own. <laughs> 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 hashtag are you trying to get financial freedom <laughs> do you want to stay home with your children uh, hashtag not a scam hashtag not a pyramid scheme hashtag not a pyramid scheme mm. okay so a little bit of background um sarah and william got married in 1862 they had one daughter named annie in 1866 but she also died that same year of something called marasimus which from what i googled uh it's some sort of malnutrition that the body creates so she essentially mm-hmm. you know starved to death without starving to death unfortunate um, it's reported that sarah never recovered from the death of her daughter um so it was just the two of them rep- until he died just Reportedly- the two of them <laughs> but have five million dollars just the two of them <laughs> reportedly over the years of marriage Sarah became more and more distressed over their source of the income. She felt partly responsible for all the deaths that her family's company product had created. Oh, I, yeah, that would be kind of hard to take. And she just inherited all of it. She didn't really start this. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. This is when William was still alive. They were residing in New Haven, Connecticut, and they continued to live there until five years after William's death. When Sarah relocated to San Jose. California. So Sarah, you go, sorry. <laughs> California. <laughs> Copyright. Okay. So I came up with that. Yeah, that was my own. They're definitely going to come up after you and be like, sorry, you sound exactly like Tupac. Uh, we're going to have to take this entire podcast and everything you own. <laughs> People are not going to listen to Tupac anymore. They're going to go straight to that moment in this podcast and play that over and over. You've ruined us. How dare you? (laughs) You've ruined us. (laughs) All right. So Sarah was swimming in cash, but her husband had just passed away. Her father-in-law has just passed away. And according to Wikipedia, her mother had also died that same year. Hmm. Although I couldn't find any cause of death, even though I tried searching for it. So that just tells me that people are not as interested in the pointless facts as I am, (laughs) I guess. Well, this is the interesting part. And out of every story that I've heard in the 1800s, which is really only t- about 200 years ago, mm-hmm. people did not live very long. Right. Like, you, it, you you could get a random disease where your body doesn't accept nutrition, and that was just a normal thing. They also didn't have diagnoses back in the day. It was like somebody died of fever instead of somebody died of the flu that caused the fever. You know, right. they, they, they just didn't... drop in like flies. Exactly. And, yeah, all the time. And it's just very common. So basically, she was alone, and she was becoming depressed. She went into mourning, and she never came out. It's said that after her husband died, she always dressed in all black. She already had problems with her source of income, but now she was part owner of the company. She considered her wealth to be blood money. Mm. So she was the original goth girl. Not just the original boss babe, but the original goth girl. This girl's a sad girl. (laughs) Dude, trendsetter. She was a sad boy before the sad boys were sad boys. She was an e-girl before the internet existed. <laughs> Sarah is just paving the way all she, over the place. She she put the E in e-girl, even though the internet didn't exist. <laughs> E's for emo. <laughs> is it really? 
No, it's not. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm like, man, this is learning so many things. I mean, it could be, but no, not originally. But for Sarah Winchester, it is. For Sarah Winchester, it is. She felt responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. So Sarah was searching for help on what to do with her money and her life in general. She reached out, as we do, to a medium that's what normal people do, right? I don't know what to do with my life. Tell me the future. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if you want TLC involved, yes, I guess that is the normal thing to do. <laughs> and Dr. Phil, somebody's right. got to see this. So allegedly she did tell the medium about how she was feeling that there was guilt over her wealth and the victims that had fallen because of this company. The medium, of course, then told her the only way to satisfy these unrested souls of her her quote-unquote victims was to do something drastic that Mm. that sounds more along the lines of tlc cut to commercial break cut to commercial break we've got to do something drastic do you need a new washer for lg (laughs) (laughs) so this medium claimed to be channeling the spirit of her late husband and directed her to move move out west and build a home for the lost souls he warned that she must start construction and never stop or else the spirits would seek their revenge. That's great. <laughs> I'm not done. We're just getting started. You remember that the story was called the Winchester Mystery House, right? Mm-hmm. And all we've done so far is talk about how Sarah, how Sarah has now moved or is the medium has told her to move. I love that this started out as like a where she had guilt so she wanted to go and fix it and now it's like she's in danger if she doesn't fix it of course what the heck dude like she's just a good person and now she's like a i don't know a target well this is all alleged as well there's i don't have the sources so i didn't want to like bring this in but just really quickly there was somebody in 2012 who said that all of this is probably just lore That Sarah didn't have any guilt about guns because back then guns were considered, I don't know, a staple like salt and pepper. Uh, Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, Like a good. Yeah, yeah. And that this was all just just a story. And this house that she created isn't created for the reasons that I'm about to tell you. It's created as a hobby house instead. So there are there there are two different sides, but this is the the paranormal side of the Winchester Mystery House. So. Just take it with a grain of salt. Sarah may or may not have been cursed, but we're going to, we're going to go with the assumption for this story that the medium (laughs) wasn't trying to just get some of her $550 million in today's money. I'm satisfied with that. So she did just that. She packed up. She moved out West to San Jose, California in 1884. Sarah purchased an unfinished farmhouse and began work right away. She didn't hire someone qualified, like an architect, to map out her demands. Instead, she hired several different carpenters and gave them each different instructions on what she wanted done in whatever area she gave them to work. She also invited mediums and spiritualists to her home with the intention of receiving advice on her builds. She wanted to know the best way to appease the spirits. Rumor has it that construction never ceased. For 38 years, she had construction on the farm home which originally only had eight rooms. It eventually turned into a seven-story mansion, complete with the basics of every home. Hallways to nowhere. Cabinets that open up into a wall. Hallways that led you back into the same hallway. Stairways to a lower floor. And then another stairway that breaks you right back up to the previous floor. Doorways that open to a 12-foot drop. Windows that opened into other rooms. I hate staircases <laughs> that would I, end and lead to nowhere. I hate to keep bringing this back to Harry Potter, <laughs> but like you know, those staircases that move the moving, and, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm imagining right now. Don't hate to bring it back to Harry Potter because <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with that. That's fine. Why would somebody put that in there? <laughs> exactly. Well, she had all the money in the world to blow, so I guess the question is not why. The question is, why not? Why? Not? All right, Sarah, girl, you do your thing. <laughs> I'll stop questioning your decisions. <laughs> she had a couple more things. She had skylights in her floors. That's pretty cool. Doors that literally lead to nowhere, to walls. She had numeric symbols all over the house and stairs with mismatched risers. 
Sometimes she would even enclose locked rooms by building a new room around that room. <laughs> I put that box inside of another box <laughs> and then I mail that box to myself. When it arrives, I smash it with a hammer because <laughs> I forgot that that room was there. Crap. So it was said that she had all these oddities constructed in an attempt to confuse the ghosts who haunted her in a hopes <laughs> that she could hide from them. Sarah's a tricky one. <laughs> Cheeky Sarah. In one article by the Los Angeles Herald in 1895, it was quoted, Improvements and additions constantly being made. For the reason, it is said that the owner of the house believes that when it is entirely complete, she will die. So either way, mm. whether she thought she was going to die or she thought she was trying to confuse the host, she had plenty of money to fund the work at the home, so she just kept going. You know, all she really had to do was think of one improvement project every single day. You know what she should have done? And she mm. should have had a huge room with tiles and like just painted one tile every single day. She probably did. Yeah. You, uh, she had so many things going up. Just hold on. Okay. <laughs> I've only told you about. I'm just getting so excited. Like Sarah, I have, I have an idea for you. <laughs> Sarah, I have interior design ideas. Hold on. <laughs> Talking into the void. Sarah, what you should have done here. She also adorned the home with luxury, of course. The house had central heating and hot water, which was a hot commodity at the time. But okay, central heating in the 1800s? Yep, it was the first of its time. Wow, that's cool. So she had central heating and she had hot water, which was really showing off her wealth because nobody had that at the time. Mm. And it really just shows her, her lack of financial issues. She could afford anything and everything. She had crystal chandeliers, multiple stained glass windows, and a couple were designed by the designer at the time of Tiffany & Co. You know, those rings that cost you $200,000 a piece? Yeah, so she had little <laughs> blue boxes all over her house. No, she had She a just had a, she had, a, she had a room <laughs> that she locked inside another room, and all that was in there was little empty Tiffany, Tiffany boxes. Yeah, empty <laughs> Tiffany little blue boxes and bags. Oh, Sarah. What are you doing? Sarah, that- Sarah. You know that song by Panic the Disco? I've been singing it in my head this entire time. Is it actually Sarah? Is that yeah, actual- yeah, yeah. So oh. his wife's name is Sarah and he wrote a song about Sarah. That's that song. And I keep, every time you say Sarah, I'm like jamming in my head. I am listening though. Don't worry. <laughs> right. You're just playing Panic just, at a Disco. It, it's just the What best. have I said? What have I said? Repeat it all back to me verbatim. It's the it's just the background music, but Sarah Winchester, <laughs> she she's a bath babe, she's a goth girl, she's an interior designer, she's everything. What did I get? What's my grade? Uh that's about a B plus, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, I'll take yeah. it. Unfortunately, in 1906, an earthquake damaged much of the home. Sarah was actually inside at the time of the earthquake and became trapped in one of her mini bedrooms. Little fun fact, she never slept in the same bedroom consecutively. A different one every single night. She was eventually rescued after a couple hours, and the home was set to be restored. It was repaired, but as it stands today, it is only four stories high. Not the original seven. Why did she sleep in separate bedrooms every night? Was that just like a... To hide from the ghost. Oh, okay. So it's not like an anxious thing. It's not like a OCD, like, she's got to switch it up. No, I think it honestly is. Why not? If you have as many bedrooms as she had, why not sleep in a different bedroom every night? But there was a one main master bedroom, which is the one she got trapped in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, So the home, as it stands today, features 24,000 square feet, roughly 161 rooms, including 40 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, 40 staircases, two ballrooms, one's unfinished, six kitchens 47 fireplaces but only 17 chimneys Mm. Mm. curious it says there's evidence of two more chimneys they just haven't been able to actually find the source of the chimneys from the inside of the home maybe that's the mystery of the winchester home it also has two thousand doors ten thousand panes of glass two basement levels dude is this a real place oh yes so you can go visit the winchester home Yes. Oh, this is cool. Has 52 skylights, three elevators, but only one shower. One shower in the whole dang <laughs> joint. In the whole home. There's 13 bathrooms, so I guess she has 13 bathtubs, but only oh, one shower. I guess showers weren't that common in the 1800s. Right. That makes sense, but also frustrating. 
The property was originally 162 acres, but has since been reduced to only 4.5, which is the minimum necessary to have the home and all of its outdoor facility buildings zoned in in the 4.5 acres. That's insane. The whole house is 4.5 acres. So she lived in the home until she died in 1922. She has said to have passed of heart failure in her sleep at the age of 82, and the estate was passed on to her niece. Although the estate was massive and she spent $5.5 million building at her time, or about $90 million today, the house was deemed worthless and it was sold to a local investor at auction. Why? The the niece emptied it and didn't want anything to do with it. And because of the 1906 earthquake and a different earthquake at a different Um, time, most of the house was um, unfinished or damaged. It's It's, just, it was too much of a project to even mess with it. Exactly. And Sarah never remarried? She didn't, no. Hmm. She she never left mourning, I remember. She wore black for the rest of her life. Right. The investor that won it at auction, he leased the home to John and Mamie Brown, who eventually ended up purchasing the home. And then nine months after Sarah's death, they opened the home up to the public with Mamie as the home's first tour guide. Today, the home is owned by a private company and is open for tours. That's so cool. So after Sarah's death, the famous magician Harry Houdini visited the home in order to debunk the claims of it having spirits. <laughs> okay. It's uh, actually, it was a pastime of Harry Houdini's to investigate and try to debunk the trend of spiritualism. <laughs> he hated spiritualism, but he was interested in it. So he wanted to debunk it. And he, at every chance he could, he would travel To these places that were supposed haunted to try to debunk them. Harry Houdini, the famous. I had no idea. He was up to some silly things in his time. So he's like a modern day shack where he has his craft, but then he goes and he like messes with everything else that he wants to like. Is that a shack of ghost hunter? Yeah. ghost adventures is run by Shaq. not what? exactly but he'll like he'll go on cooking shows he'll be with like martha stewart right right he right. has he's his got own a lot show. of interests uh-huh yeah i don't know so that's really cool that he like went and hated spiritualism but it wanted to disprove it he was just like this is not real so in response to his visit there's there's differing claims most of the claims are like oh even he couldn't deny the weirdness of the house but He's quoted to have said, it's an example of how spiritualism makes a person insane. Mm -hmm. And it's reported that he was the one who named the house the Winchester Mystery House. The house is rumored to still be haunted. I guess the ghosts weren't just following Sarah after all. Along with the reports of hearing footsteps in her bedroom, cold spots, or even seeing doorknobs turn on their own, visitors of the home have claimed to see what they call the wheelbarrow ghost. A former employee of the estate who appears with black hair and white overalls and is seen working on the home, sometimes pushing along his spectral wheelbarrow. At least he's helpful. Well, maybe it's just her that's haunting the place now. <laughs> like, maybe it was never haunted until she became a ghost and it was like, all right, it's my turn. <laughs> it's, it's my turn. I don't know. <laughs> this is what I built this home for. Do you know Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be put to use. So she took uh, on that role of make sure, making sure it was haunted because she was, <laughs> she was the one doing the haunting. I don't know. Well, according to one story, a man working on restoring part of the home was working in what's known as the Hall of Fires, a section of the home with several fireplaces. He felt someone tap him on the back. When he turned around to inquire what the person wanted, there was no one there. He tried to ignore it and continue working, but the sensation happened again. He had had enough of that and left the Hall of Fires to go work <laughs> elsewhere in the home, and the sensation stopped. <laughs> mm. Mm. Fascinating. And finally, the possible ghost of Sarah Winchester herself. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, to I her called guy. it. You called it, but I didn't want to ruin it, you know, about two seconds ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> a tour guide had just finished showing the visitors the Daisy bedroom, which is that bedroom that she got trapped in during the earthquake. They were headed down the hallway, leaving, when the tour guide heard a clear sigh coming from outside the bedroom door in the hallway. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> Sorrowful e-girl sigh. 
(laughs) The guy thought that maybe a guest had been left behind and turned around to retrieve them, but she didn't see anybody. But then her eyes adjusted to the darkened hallway and she saw the form of a small dark person gliding around the corner. The guide went around the corner to follow the apparition, but it was gone. As she rounded the corner to see nothing, she was again faced with a loud sigh. It's her belief that the tour guide had encountered what was the ghost of Sarah, annoyed that people are in her bedroom. <laughs> and that's all I got for the Winchester Mystery House. Wow. So Sarah's just a legend. Sarah's a legend, yeah. And her home is still attracting all sorts of visitors. So the moral of the story is Mary Rich. Mary Rich and you can have a hobby home that makes absolutely no sense. And then you can wander around your own home as a ghost and sigh at people and still have your worker with you. That's probably why she put that door to the outside 12 foot drop so that she could just like as a ghost open up the door and jump on people. Scare the crap out of them. (laughs) That would be fun. Geronimo! If you're going to be a ghost why not make it fun? I feel like Sarah had a good sense of humor. Make the best of it. There was a door to like her kitchen sink, above her kitchen sink, a hallway, and then a door to just fall out into the kitchen sink. None of this <laughs> construction made sense. That reminds me of, I have not seen, these are not very common. And I didn't realize that as a kid, it was cool that we had a laundry chute. Oh, from the yes. Upstairs to the downstairs. Yeah. And I was always tempted as a child to just like jump down in it down the chute it's just like a, this tin box that you yeah. just put the clothes down and it didn't look that far no, you it didn't. Probably made i it. feel like i feel like our brother or somebody has done that probably had to have. i think that creed did it once maybe shouts out to creed being the brave one <laughs> i wasn't gonna say his name just in case he wanted his identity <laughs> hidden he doesn't even go by creed though nobody will find him don't worry okay good the band will just keep popping up. <laughs> That's give exactly up. who he is. He's the lead singer of Creed. That's our brother. Whatever that guy's name is. We just, our family is just full of famous people. Us, <laughs> this award winning podcast that is, this is our fourth episode. And then the lead singer of Creed. <laughs> and with that, let's move on to Chris's Corner. <laughs> Did you know Kylie? That orcas are in the dolphin family. Kylie, did you know that orcas are in the dolphin family? I didn't. I actually might have. No, I didn't. I did not know that. I thought they were whales. Okay. Killer whales. Well, yes. So orcas are killer whales. That's the same animal. Okay. Um, How many human fatalities do you think that orcas have caused with orca attacks on humans? What's your guess? Um, Okay, I don't know an exact number, but I know that it's more than sharks. Ooh. See, this is the weird fact of the week. Okay. Because orcas have not ever attacked a human. Or oh! have any recorded fatality for a swimmer. You know what, then? Maybe person. I'm lying. No, I just want to know where I got that information. Because there's something else in the ocean that's killed more people than sharks. And that's going to drive me crazy. I thought it was killer whales. Wow, they haven't killed anybody at all, huh? Not one person. And the crazy thing about that is that orcas are the trolls of the ocean. So they'll literally, like, they'll just kill seals for fun. They'll go up to seals, throw them in the air, catch them in their mouth, spit them out. They don't care. They'll go up to great white sharks because they're blind. They'll get paralyzed if they're flipped on their stomachs. Orcas will go up mess with them flip them over swim away just to do it they're bullies to do they're bullies they're bullies of the ocean but the crazy thing is is they will not mess with humans why i don't know it must be that like dolphin mentality of loyalty to humans i just saw this video of this swimmer and there is three humongous killer whales swimming around the swimmer almost like they were swimming together Uh uh-huh and for there to be not one fatality recorded is just, like, beyond me. I couldn't believe it. That's I weird. Could, I could not believe it. Why are they called killer whales then? Because they kill other things? <laughs> they kill everything else just for fun. 
Now I need to know what that thing is that kills more than sharks because sharks don't ha- they have a bad reputation but they they don't they don't kill that there's not that many shark attacks there really yeah. is not yeah. and we should not be afraid of sharks when we go in the ocean we should be afraid of sirens and mermaids is what Whoa, should, true that is what we should be afraid of <laughs> no but yeah and sharks, jellyfish yeah no we shouldn't be afraid of shark attacks but more like jellyfish you know things that are actually like you're gonna get you before a shark attack does but if you were to see an orca kill your whale it almost guaranteed is not gonna mess with you that is so weird because i feel like if i saw well you're not gonna catch me out in the ocean for any reason on a boat but if i was out in the middle of the ocean on a boat and i saw an orca i think i would be more scared than if i saw a shark because i did have that that thought that they are they're just like root and they kill things for fun but i thought that humans were in that group not at all i i just saw this tiktok of this poor little seal that jumped on this fisherman's boat because he was trying to run away from an orca oh yeah i saw that too. you saw that yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's because that seal knew that he that orca has bad intentions and he's not gonna be playfully swimming around with him like he would if that seal was a human they just and- kept hopping up on the boat help mm-hmm. me please <laughs> mm-hmm. and then he would go back in the water because he was kind of afraid of the boat too but yeah, then he was yeah. like uh, no the whale's still there like i gotta, <laughs> I just gotta trust this man he with was my life. stalking him mm-hmm. yeah yeah the killer whale went right up to the boat that's so weird huh you would think aggressive is aggressive but apparently they have some limits they're picky yeah, yeah. they have i guess standards like who they mess with i don't know it's weird because they have like this personality of the dolphins where they're really like chill with humans but then they're just nasty for no reason just to be nasty just because they can weird so um, yeah what a weird world like so strange that this ocean creature decides to be tame for nobody else but humans that's so strange no 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 and the other thing is they're so like because they're really smart yeah. So you know how like, and this might be because of their blindness, but sharks will see the tail of your surfboard and think that it's a seal and won't right. realize. And so most shark attacks are not because they're trying to hunt a human. They mistake you as whatever prey that they're looking for. Or trying but, to figure out what you are. Right. And they have, they can only do that with their taste buds. <laughs> exactly. Basically. Yeah. There's hundreds of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> like, hold on. Let me just figure this out real quick. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Oops. But the killer whales obviously can see that or are not just like they're more aware. And That's they've decided that we are worthy enough to not be messed with. <laughs> That's makes so no, interesting. Makes no sense. That's weird how, I don't know, I, I'm thinking of like horses. There's just certain animals that we as humans can connect with in a different way. How did we know to go tame wild horses? How did well, we know that cows weren't going to stomp us to death? You know crazy. What I'm it's crazy because a lot of animals are made specifically for humans. Think about that. Horses are made for transportation. Cows are made for milk. Chickens are made for eggs. Like that blows my mind that these specific animals are almost made for us. And I think that's like really beautiful. Hmm. And you're right with the connection. That's why dolphins are my favorite animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just like, they just have that connection with you and they're so human-like. I love it. I think intelligent-wise, other than pigs or something, dolphins are the closest to to humans. Oh, really? And I guess an orca would be in that same In that category. So that makes sense, yeah. I've been in the ocean where I've seen wildlife and uh, it's kind of calming. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I was in the situation, if I were to freak out. I was kayaking. I've seen a tiger shark. And, you know, it was just kind of like, I acknowledge him. He acknowledges me. And uh, yeah, I just keep going. So maybe not. But I, I just thought that that was so cool that they like, I don't know, they're big trolls, big trolls of the ocean. <laughs> big old buttheads. Big old buttheads. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, they are beautiful. And I like to watch documentaries on them. But being out in the middle of the ocean at maybe this creature's mercy who likes to flip things over, that scares me. <laughs> well, we couldn't even play Grand Theft Auto looking for the shark in the boat. And as soon as we did, we shut the game off. That was terrifying. 
I was we were literally <laughs> screaming so loud. I was like, I wanted thought was, to see what happened. I thought it was fun to like troll you because deep water scares you, even yes. in the video game setting. So I'm like, I'm gonna find the shark, and that's gonna be so funny. And as soon as I did, I was like, I couldn't handle it. I scared you. <laughs> You shut the game off because I was like, I don't want to watch this. What's what's the character's name? The main character Michael. in GTA, Michael. Michael. I didn't want Michael to, to have that experience. Death <laughs> is scary, dude. <sighs> By the time you got to the shark, I was like, No, you have to do it. I need to see what happens. Dang it! <laughs> it's just like, Oh, nope, sign down. it off. <laughs> Good times. Well, that was another episode of the Weird Fact of the Week in Chris's Corner. Thanks for joining me. Yay! Thank you for that, Chris. <laughs> of course. <Wow. laughs> All right. Well, do you want to let everybody know where they can find us on our social medias? I did that last week. It's your turn. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna let everybody know where you can find us on social media. <laughs> Eat my butt. All right. <laughs> right. We are on Instagram at What a Weird World Pod, Twitter at What a Weird Pod. And we have a Facebook page. If you just search What a Weird World Pod, you should be able to find us. As you all know, if you've heard before, we are accepting listener stories. We want to start doing listener episodes and would love to feature you. So if you have any weird stories that are paranormal or just kind of strange, you can send us an email at whatawirdworldpod at gmail.com reviews and ratings really help thank you guys so much um who has reviewed on apple podcasts i would just like to point out that one review that we got this week did you happen to read that review chris it has something to do with my sultry voice and i couldn't quote it verbatim but i understand (laughs) what did it say can you look it up 10 out of 10 would holla at chris (laughs) okay thanks a lot you know what's weird about that is that uh <clears throat> we sound almost the same on the pod so what makes me different hey it's hey web toes skew <laughs> dear reviewer is it my slit mouth my web toes and my enlarged forehead that made you want to write that don't forget body odor you and have body extreme odor. body odor <laughs> love chris love chris <laughs> we'll holla at you back <laughs> 10 out of 10 we'll holla back <laughs> so rate review share all the good stuff that helps see what you like what you don't like how to make a better podcast we want to stick around as long as possible so if you like us just let us know give us some some feedback so we can some make some good podcasts for you Sib the, the baby podcast some nothing please please <laughs> actually you don't have you don't want to uh, you don't have to if you don't want to like this is the great thing about america and the world is that you have the choice to do whatever you want to do so if you don't want to rate us then you don't have to but please do and if you leave a really good review you it might even be read out loud on the show just (laughs) can somebody holla at me or something (laughs) give kylie some love (laughs) okay with that (laughs) thank you guys so much for joining us and we're gonna sign off now this is chris and this is kylie With What a World World. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.